Oh, right. We are on the edge of the field. It's not going to tell me this piece of equipment can only be used. Blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, you think you are done. Um, I'm not so sure. was a problem for this row. And we down to the bottom. So I think probably going to leave this tractor here and finish the baling off and then I can follow me both of them down to the fields that still need done. Okay, lift that up, I don't need to be collecting all of that. Um, and there is probably a swath along the top that needs to be pulled in from the edge. So. piece of equipment. Okay, let's try that again. What is, what is it now? So, and, uh, Probably a five-year-old side panel. Some of the uh, buttons are a little bit tired and don't always work. Sometimes they work too many times, but uh, a lot of the time they just don't always work. And it's like we didn't come back this way along the most of that stretch, so just do that. Try and make it reasonably straight for the, uh, the thing and get that turned off. Alrighty, um, I will park this pointing at the entrance to the yard and uh, I think the next thing to do is I can go right there, or I can just go straight down here. And peek around the corner, that's the exit. Okay, engine off. You are somewhat done. over here because this is not the exactly the fastest track I mean, yeah as far as work goes doing this sort of thing I could get myself a small um, fertilizer spreader for this we have a front weight attached so although I don't know how big it is but this 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 is the sort of tractor you could use for um, simple tasks like this um, road speed is slow but uh, that doesn't matter when it comes to field speeds. Oh, come on, go. Anyway. 
And I figure once I get all the heading done, it's going to take a short while to ted the last field. Um, yeah, bit over here. Don't have to row all of the grass along the edge, so long as most of it is hay. Everything will get collected. Okay. We should depart through the crossroad. T junction. This was the way we were supposed to go to stay on a farm track rather than skirt the edge of 46. Still a lot of wind out there. So yeah, the worry is that some of the grass that's falling in the uncut section may not be uh, collected. Which is why occasionally I will swath the edge of the cut when we're going around the field. Okay, you are done. Uh, you are a thing, and you are nowhere near done. So, pack this one up. Okay. Off we go on this one. And as I said, because of, of the size of this vehicle and uh, towed implement, my goodness, FedEx is out. Um, doing adjacent rows can be a little bit difficult. I mean, it's one of the things with um, oh, Smetty's Fent. Fabric 900. It's not a very high horsepower tractor, but it is a large tractor, which makes front loader work quite a bit easier because it has the weight to pick up all the things. Um, but again, when it comes to uh, running equipment, the the radius of the turn just not the greatest so uh, you have to make allowances for it but still I think we've done okay here the merge oh yeah the merge has stopped waiting for us to catch up on the bailing and then a little bit there we can grab The reason why I'm running across some of these rows is because it gives me a little bit more room to straighten up from the end. Well, I can see what I'm doing, cause tree. Alrighty. Looks like we actually got that one reasonably straight in the mist, because I'm rowing the middle, not the edge. Okay, what's the time? Coming up on 11. I 
So yeah, we're coming up on a couple of marathon weekends for bonus streams. So the, uh, the small problem with that is that I am at two videos a day at half hour each. I'm going to overload um, YouTube um, release schedule. And if you do happen to watch the series on YouTube and sometimes on stream, you may find that the stream is a long way ahead of where you got up to on YouTube. I mean, obviously this, yeah, I mean, even this one. Because we've been streaming now for about two and a half hours, that's five YouTube videos. Um, first two drop tomorrow, second two would drop on Sunday, and the th fifth one would drop on Monday. Now, the Monday drop will happen before the Monday stream, but you've got the Saturday stream still to be released. Um, and if you come in tomorrow to watch the stream, none of the YouTube videos will have dropped before the stream starts. So, however, because of the way Twitch works, if you come in early tomorrow, you can watch this stream um, on Twitch and then jump straight into the next episode on Twitch again. There's ways around it. It's just I don't I don't release the first YouTube drop until um, 24 hours after the stream happened on Twitch. I think there used to be sort of a requirement that you don't do simultaneous streams on all the channels, and uh, also that. Um, you didn't release video drops until after you had, uh, yeah, 24 hours after the stream happened on Twitch type of thing. I don't think that's still an issue anymore, but it's kind of what I got used to. Plus, with it gives me the rest of today to render all the videos from this stream. And when you're streaming in high def, it does take a while to... Uh, for the videos to render. And, oh, 7,900, we are not going to make a bail on this field. Or are we? No, we're not. We'll lift the pickup, we'll drive through. Uh, Massey Ferguson is still running, so that's good. And we are just going to get to some continuous... Um, oh, you are in the way. Nudge. Forgot to consider that. And obviously with this contraption, I am not allowed to drive through hedges. Because there's a bale in the back and the bale will get stuck and that would be a problem. Not a problem with round bales. Because round bales don't exist until you unload the round baler. Unless you've got the bale wrapper, in which case the bale that is being wrapped does exist and will bonk on a hedge. But the bale that is being created inside the baler, not going to affect your bales can't travel through hedges scripts. Which has been around for quite some time. Um, I think the first map I played was uh, an Oxygen David map. But, um, and very grateful for it I was at the time, because it was something like um, Colbert Park Farm or something like that, which is a very hilly map, and um, 
there was a time I baled up a field and wrapped up a field and collected all the bales that I thought were on the field except about a dozen bales had rolled off the field across the next field and into the road um, down at the bottom of the hill and so I ended up getting all sorts of problems driving a cart of grain to the market or something like that and uh, rounded a corner and it's sort of oh there's all these bales in the road and I don't have anything to pick them up with right here and I can't get the grain cart through because they're just blocking everything and then I think about a month later he implemented the uh, bales can't drive go through uh, hedges script and no more surprise bales in the middle of a lane that's nowhere near a grass field. And now many people use it. I mean mostly uh, um, the farming agency when they mod a map they will uh, include the script because I don't know that Oxygen David is a member of Farming Agency, but I think they consider him to be an honorary member of the Farming Agency because he he does participate in some of the work they do. And uh, if they are modding a map, it's very common for the maps that they mod to be his maps. Um, I mean, from Farm Sim 19, we started out on Oxygen David's Oakfield Farm, and we ended up on the farming agency's modded version of that map. So, uh, but those were the days when maze maps tailored to Maze Plus were. Um, generally a little bit better um, primarily because of the extra crops that were added to the map um, so for maize plus for example you can feed your animals carrots but I can't grow gar carrots on this map because um, they're not actually a thing now that's not to say um, it looks like we're getting carrots for um, season two at some point and so I kind of expect when a crop is added to the game it suddenly becomes available on all maps although that said there is sometimes the issue if you're using a, um, a custom geo that, uh, or what is it, weather, um, I can't remember what they call them for 22, the weather um, thing, the crop calendars, that's the thing, yeah, in, in prior versions it was a geo, in 22 it's a crop calendar, so if you're using a custom crop calendar, obviously the crop calendar we're using does not have carrots in the calendar and so uh, yeah it would not we, we would have to have the crop calendar modified in order to um, allow uh, carrots to be grown and harvestable because it if basically the crop calendar is defining when a crop can be planted um, when its growth stages are, how many growth stages it has, and uh, when it can be harvested, and then when it will wither. So if you don't have a crop listed there, the game doesn't know how and when it's going to all happen. And I think there's other things, you know, horse grass, alfalfa, clover. Not available on this map, the textures aren't available on this map. In order to make them, I am, you can buy them from the store. 
that you can't grow them naturally. Um, and in order to make them happen, you need um, the textures, like we have a grass check texture here and a hay texture. Um, you would need the textures added in order for them to to happen, but then they also need to be in the crop calendar. And again, that's additional work that in the past has been done for some maps by the farming agency. And then in other situations, um, a, um, a map creator will um, either figure it out for himself or um, check with the farming agency how to do it and then we'll add those crops for himself. Anyway, that's all the thing. And it looks like the tether's finished. So, I think... Missed a bit. And again, bias this to the right, because there's quite a bit of uh, grass beyond the point of the windrow. Back up here, and I think there might be a couple of bits at the top. But, uh, well, actually a few bits on the top. And we got the extra bale. Okay. We'll grab that bit. And we'll park this thing up behind the uh, doits. And I think what we can probably do is empty that. <coughs> Fold it up. Boop. Because we're now going to do a bit of root driving, so I don't really want an extended uh, tray out the back of the baler. All right, so that is four baled hay fields, um, and yeah, engine on, stick it in reverse. Turn the other way. And spread the grass. So I think current plan is we'll be back for our usual Saturday night day, morning, day stream tomorrow. Um, this work will all be complete by then. Um, since I've got Farming Simulator set up, I'll do all the collection and sales off camera um, later on today. And uh, then we'll be back with the harvester tomorrow and hopefully a whole bunch of fields to harvest during the month of July. Actually kind of interesting here. It's only nine o'clock. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised. Game time. Um, I'm kind of surprised we didn't really get very far um, into the day with this. I, Maybe I didn't need to get up at six o'clock in the morning to uh, to deliver all the the perishables. Oh, speaking of perishables, I did make one change to dairy production. What I've discovered is the dairy basically has one production line, and if you are producing cheese and butter, it will share that production over the course of a month so you might be able to get uh, guessing um, six pallets of butter 
and three pallets of cheese. Sorry, it's six pallets of butter or three pallets of cheese. Or you get um, three pallets of butter and one and a half pallets of cheese. So because I was producing cheese and butter at the dairy, um, it would it would only produce 50% production, you know, maximum capacity of each one. Since our auto load truck only allows me to carry one product in the back of it, um, that does mean that um, I would have to make two trips, one with three pallets of butter and one with one pallet of cheese most of the time, all the way across the map to sell. So I have turned off cheese production because I did a little bit of calculation and cheese production is about 50% of butter production rate. And then um, income from butter is about 10% more than income from cheese. So it just makes sense to produce the butter because it's a little bit more valuable for the amount you produce over the course of a month and uh, it does mean we only have to make the trip once uh, there was a uh, da, 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 a mod today which increases production pallet capacity base game only no mods um, so I'm guessing platinum expansion doesn't uh, achieve this um, what's it um, this capacity increase but it increases the pallet capacity by five so um, instead of producing 5,000 or 1,000 liters of butter per pallet you produce 5,000 liters of butter the downside of that is that um, obviously the number of pallets you produce per month is vastly reduced um, conversely it does mean I can I don't have to use that little truck um, to carry things and it would only accept one pallet or 1.4 pallets anyway but I can I can use a manual load truck and just ship everything at the same time um, but activating that mod would mean that currently we get two pallets of bread per month. We would get 40% of a pallet per month, which means we'd only have to ship bread to um, Maple Exports um, every third month. I'm not averse to that. Same with the tomato. Uh, no, tomatoes are a mod. So we would always have to transport all of the tomato pallets, but I can make that easier by maybe growing lettuce um, because you produce one pallet of lettuce to every two pallets of tomatoes. And again, if we go into pigs, then um, I'm, I'm planning to use beets or potatoes from the um, greenhouse garden to feed them because their food requirements is only five percent of total so yeah it's it's all a thing um, but it, it may make shipping stuff to um, a lot more efficient <coughs> when we start making flour the fact that it can spawn six pallets but that's 30,000 litres of flour um, is uh, gonna make the number of trips required far more manageable and does that actually lift that up yes it does okay so that is all the tedding done and I think I may put that down Okay, turn the engine off. Oh. 
Okay, but I think for now, um, we'll call us done here. Um, <coughs> if you're not around tomorrow, I wish you all a good Merry Christmas. Uh, we will be here tomorrow again and again and again on Monday. So, um, as I say, have a Merry Christmas. And for now, I'm out of here.